This video is for how to configure a new LED display and make it work. This is the typical system framework of a LED display. There are three main components, the control computer, the sending card, and a screen. The screen is composed of multiple cabinets, and in every cabinet is a receiver card. Please know that a receiver card is also named a scan board. DVI cables and USB cables are used to connect the control computer and the sending card. The DVI cable is for image data transmission, and the USB cable is for instructions and parameters. Receiver cards are connected to the sending card through Ethernet cable. In this video, we are going to illustrate how to configure a LED display with four cabinets and make it work. In every cabinet, there is a receiver card. This is the receiver card in a cabinet. It is connected with the module through flat cables. Also seen from this picture is that there is a 4x4 module array in this cabinet. Modules of each row are connected together, and data goes from right to left when watched from the front. From right to left, this is the module cascading type of this cabinet. The pixel resolution of a module is 32 by 32, and that of a cabinet is 128 by 128. This picture shows how the four cabinets are connected together. Double-click the NOVA LCT shortcut on the desktop to run NOVA LCT. Select User Advanced Login to open the dialog for login. The password for Advanced User is ADMIN. Click the Screen Config button and on the open window, click Next. Open the Sending Board page. Make sure the resolution of the sending card is the same as that of the Control Computer Video Card. If they are not the same, reset the sending card resolution and set the sending board display mod panel. Open the scan board page. Click the smart setting button on the lower left corner to start smart setting procedure. Select option 1, smart setting on the pop-up dialog and click next. Set the module parameters on this smart setting step 1 page according to the fact. These include data type, IC type, and so on. Actual pixel is asking for the size of the module pixel array, and we know it is 32 by 32, as mentioned above. For scan type, if you don't know, just select Unknown. Set module in one scan board as one by one. This is to tell the system we are going to configure the first module of the first cabinet of the screen. When the configuration through smart setting is finished, the control system will know all information required for controlling the modules. As mentioned above, the module cascading type of the cabinet is from right to left. So select right to left for the module cascading type here. Show in the window at the lower left corner of this video is the screen we are configuring on. And now what we are looking at is the first module of the first cabinet of the screen. Click Next to open the page of Smart Setting Step 2. In the following Smart Setting Steps, please select or set options in the pop-up dialog according to the content shown on the screen. In step 2, the screen shows nothing, so select black. Click next to access step 3. Select corresponding color in this page. When finished, click next. Finish settings on the page according to the number of light rows on this screen. The number of light rows now is 8, so set 8 and click next. The number of light rows now is 1, so set 1. In this step, the smart setting step 9, there will be a pixel blinking on the module we are working on.
click the corresponding grid according to the position of the blinking pixel. When finished, click Next. Smart setting has now finished. You may now save the settings to a file or just click Finish to finish Smart Setting Procedure and return to Scan Board page. Now, we are going to do the settings for receiver cards. First, we set the size of the receiver card's pixel array. It is 128 by 128. Then, we select the gray scale and the gray mod. This is accelerate rate. The larger the accelerate rate is, the higher the visual refresh rate of the screen will be. After the refresh rate is set, the pixel array width of the scan board turns red. This means the settings are out of the ability of the control system. Lower the refresh rate or increase data clock can solve this problem. Here, we increase the data clock. Default settings for other parameters are good. They don't need to be changed. Click Send to HW button. In the pop-up dialog, select All Scan Board and click Send. Settings done above will be sent to all receiver cards. And receiver card setting is now finished. Let's look at the screen now. Each of the four cabinets is able to show images but there are blinking color blocks. This is because the data clock is too fast. Lower the data clock or adjust the clock phase can eliminate the color blocks. Here, we do the color phase adjustment. When set color phase as 1, the image becomes OK. Now, click Save button to save the settings to flash on the receiver cards. Open the screen configuration page. Click the config button on the upper right corner to access the configuration page. Select standard screen. This is the standard screen configuration page. First, we select the sending card and ethernet port that are connected to the screen. Then, we set the size of the scan board array. It is 2 by 2. Click Reset All button after setting. Next, check whether the receiver card pixel array size is good. 128 by 128 is good in this case. Next, click the receiver card one by one in order they are connected. Click Send to HW button to send the settings to the hardware. When the sending is finished, the screen is able to work. Don't forget to save the settings to fresh in the hardware by clicking the Save button. Now, the configuration of the new screen has been finished and the screen is ready to work. For the convenience of display maintenance, we save the settings to a screen configuration file. To do this, just click Save Config File and follow the instructions. Now, we illustrate how to config a display with a screen configuration file. Click Screen Config button in the toolbar of NOVA LCT. In the pop-up dialog, select Load Config File and specify the screen configuration file to be used. Then, click Next. When the loading is finished, the screen is ready to work. 